In this video, we continue with section 4.2, the inflection point. So recall from section 4.1, we study about the critical point. So the critical point is the location where your function is changing from decreasing to increasing or from increasing to decreasing. So if your function is changing from decreasing to increasing or f prime is less than zero to f prime is bigger than zero then at the point where the size of f prime is changing we have the local mean for this case and if your function is increasing and then it's changing to decreasing then you should have the local max where this point should be your critical point and of course for increasing f prime should be bigger than zero and for decreasing your f prime is less than zero now that is all about the critical point and we're using the first derivative to find uh, the critical point so you just find f prime first and then set that equal to zero and so for the value that make your f prime is equal to zero or undefined and you get a critical point then we can use the first derivative test to test for the size of f prime and determine whether that is local min or local max. Now, for this section, we learn another topic called inflection point. So the point at which the graph of the function changes concavity is called the inflection point. So we remember if your function is changing from increasing to decreasing or decreasing from to increasing that is called a critical point now your inflection point is where your function is changing the concavity that means it's changing from concave up to concave down or it's from concave down to concave up so take a look at this picture on the left side here we have concave of right this is the uh, smiling face concave of and then at this point it's stack changing to concave down or the sad face remember this is concave of right this is concave of and this is concave down okay so this is concave of and at this point it's switching to concave down so the point where it's switching from concave of to concave down or where it's changing the concavity this point is called the point of inflection or the inflection point now at this point your second derivative of the function should be zero so again if you are using the first derivative then we are testing for the critical point and if you are using the second derivative then you are testing for the point of inflection and one thing that you should um, see from this graph here if you have a concave of then your remember your your second derivative should be positive right for the plus side smiling face now if you have concave down then your second derivative should be minus or negative in this case the same thing here if we are changing from concave down to concave of then this point is a point of inflection where your uh, double prime equal to zero and concave of again your second derivative is, is positive and concave down it should be less than zero or negative so in order to find the point of, of inflection now we first find the second prime or f double prime and then set that function equal to zero or undefined so where the location of your double prime is zero or undefined there is a, a possible inflection point as those two locations and after you find a point of inflection again just pick a test point and check for the size of f double prime if the size is changing from positive to negative then that point is the point of inflection or it's changing from 
negative to positive, then that point is the point of inflection. Now we already know the concept, so let's go a one symbol and it will make more sense. So if I have a function f of x equal x to the third power minus 9x squared minus 48x and plus 52. Okay, so we are trying to find the inflection point. Okay. So find the inflection point. So find inflection point. Now, in order to find the inflection point, remember we first find the f double prime, and then you're gonna set that equal to zero or where f double prime is undefined. Okay, so let's try to find f double prime. But before we can find f double prime, we first find f prime. So take the first derivative of this function using the power rule bring down a 3 so 3 subtract 1 from that become 2 now bring down a 2 9 times 2 is 18 and then subtract 1 from that 2 minus 1 give you 1 now this is to the power of 1 so bring down a 1 subtract 1 from that you got x to the 0 which is 1 so you got minus 48 and for any constant it becomes 0 so this is your first derivative now we need to find the f second prime or double prime. Again, you see the power rule. Bring down a 2, so 6, 3 times 2 is 6. Subtract 1 from that, become 1 for the power of x. And then this one, this is the first power. So bring down a 1, it becomes 0 for the, the power here. And x to the 0 is just 1. So you got minus 18. And this is become a 0 because this is constant. Now you already know f double prime. Then we set this equal to zero. Remember, if we are using the critical point, we are testing for the critical point, then we set the first prime or the first derivative equal to zero and so for x. Now we are testing for the inflection points, then you set the f double prime equal to zero and you solve for x. So you, this is easy. Um, 6x equal to 18, right? Plus 18 on both sides. And then so for x, divide both sides by 6, x is gonna be 3. So 3, this is not the inflection point, remember. This is the possible inflection point. We have to test in order to confirm this is really the inflection point. Right now, we only know this is the possible inflection point but it's not 100% sure that it will be the inflection point. So how do we test this? Now, we have this is number 3 on the number line. So pick one point on the right of number 3, one point to the left of that. So I'll just pick random number, let's say 5. Okay, and see the size of f double prime. So if I have f of 5, then my f double prime of 5 it should be 6 times 5 minus 18. Now, 6 times 5 give me 30 minus 18. That should be 12. 12 is positive, so it's bigger than 0. So, on the right side of number 3, I have f double prime bigger than 0. So, this is positive, or we have what? We have concave of now pick one point to the right, uh, to the left of number three. So for easy, I just pick zero. So f double prime of zero, I got six times zero minus 18. And six times zero is zero, zero minus 18, just minus 18. And this is negative. So my f double prime is negative. That means I have concave down right so remember this point number three 
Now, on the left side of that, we have negative. On the right side of 3, we have positive. So that means f double prime is changing the sign from the left to the right of number 3 at this point. Therefore, x equal 3 is the inflection point. So because we can confirm that my second derivative is changing, changing the sign from negative to positive, then x equal 3 is the point of inflection. Okay, And if you do plot um, the function, then you should get something like this. So number 3 should be around here. This is 3, right? So you see, this is changing from concave, concave down to what? To concave up on the right of 3. So before 3, we have concave down, and after 3, we have concave up. So this is the inflection point. Okay, let's go to the second um, example. Okay, so that is same as is from the textbook. It's it's asks you to graph a function f um, with the following properties. Now f has a critical point as x equal four and an inflection point as x equal eight. The value of f prime is negative to the left of four and positive to the right of four, and the value of f double prime is positive to the left of 8 and negative to the right of number 8. Now, they give us two important points. One is the critical point as x equal 4 and one, the other one is the inflection point as x equal 8. Now, imagine I, 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 I know this graph. Okay, I have x equal 4 which is the, which is the critical point and x equal 8, which is the inflection point. Now, I, I know that at 4, I have critical point. At 8, I have the inflection point. So as the critical point, I know that my function will be changing from decreasing to increasing or from increasing to decreasing. And then, now they give us another information. The value of f prime is negative to the level of 4. So 4 is, is the critical point. So on the left of 4, it's negative for f prime. That means your function is decreasing. So on the left of 4, my function is decreasing. Now, and positive to the right of 4, that means on the right of my, my x equal 4, my function is increasing because my f prime is positive. So on the left of 4, I have decreasing. On the right of 4, I have increasing. This is just the um, possible sketch of the graph. Uh, you can draw different shape as long as it's decreasing and increasing at the point four. It should be good. Now we so we can draw from the level four and the right four. And then now let's take a look at the the point number eight. So the value of f double prime is positive to the level of eight and negative to the right of 8. So if you have positive to the left of number 8, that means your function should be concave up. And after number 8, your function should be concave down. So here, you see this is concave up, right? It's not um, clearly the smiling face, but, but should be concave up. And at this point, it starts changing to concave now. If I can redraw the graph, we can draw another possible graph. I would uh, draw this something like this. Now, this is number 4, this is number 8. So, I know that it's decreasing, right? Before number 4, and then it's increasing. Okay. Remember, because after number 4, we should be increasing. So that's why it's much growing up. 
it's not you cannot have the value less than uh, the point to the left of number four because at number four the critical point you have the increasing but it's increasing in the way that it will give you concave down to the right of number eight but it's still concave up to the left of number eight so again you can see here we have a little bit of concave up here and then we stack increasing but slowly so it's, it will give you the shape of concave down after the point number eight so this is just one possible graph of um, this example now there's a warning that you should um, be very very be careful so not every point x where your second double prime is zero or undefined is an inflection point remember after you find the value of x when setting f double prime is equal to zero you have to test for the size of f double prime if, if it's not changing anything then that point is not the inflection point so for example I have f of x equal x to the 4 power and the wrap of that should be something like this now if I take the first if I take the first uh, uh, derivative or f prime I bring down the 4 I subtract 1 from that now I take one more prime I bring down a 3 I got 12 subtract 1 from that just here now I set this thing equal to 0 I solve for x so 12 x squared equals 0 therefore x equal to 0 right so we assume that x equal to 0 is the inflection point then on the left of x equal to 0 and on the right of x equal to 0 your f double prime should change the size but in this case if I pick one value maybe minus 1 on the left of 0 I have f double prime of minus 1 I got what 12 and then minus 1 square that's give me 12 so this is positive and I pick one point to the right of, of 0 um, again 1 f double prime of 1 I get 12 and 1 square give me 12 bigger than 0 so again on the left side is bigger than 0 on the right side of 0 is also bigger than 0 so f double prime is not changing in this case and there is no change in concavity at x equals 0 therefore we don't have the point of inflection here and in fact this is all always concave up right it's not concave down or changing from down to up or up to down it's always concave up so you should be careful um, when testing for the point of inflection make sure that all the point must be has the um, second uh, prime changing from positive to negative or negative to positive there's one more example let's go to uh, this page so we have another example here I have a graph and this graph uh, represent for the population okay this may be the population of some animal and with respect to the time now L is the limiting population or the maximum population it can have this value is L and this middle value is L minus 2 L over 2 okay so I can have something like okay so here so here is the inflection point so again it's changing from concave 
concave concave up to concave down okay so the the question is what is the significant um, of the inflection point to the population okay now if you take a look at this graph as the times before the inflection point the population is increasing faster every year so it's, it's going very uh, very steeper here right it's very steep so the slope is very stiff here so increasing faster faster every year now at the time after the inflection point the population is still increasing but the rate of increasing is slower compared to the area before the inflection point and that means as the inflection point the population is growing fastest So it's increasing very fast each year. Then at this point, it's like decreasing, but decreasing at the rate of increasing. That means it's still increasing, but then it's increasing at a slower rate compared to the point before the inflection point. That means at this point, we have the, uh, the population to growing fastest. So the maximum rate at this point, and then it's, it's, it's growing but in a slower rate. Okay, so that's that's what uh, what the significant of the inflection point to the population. Now, if you watch this video, uh, I give you another opportunity to get one point extra credit. Um, so email me, right, and you have to answer one question so um, I give you a function f of x equal x square minus 5x plus 3 okay so find the inflection point okay so find the inflection point email me with your answers explanation um, why you get your answer then I'll give you one point to your midterm score.